Hello students, we are going to start the topic vegetative reproduction. In the last class we have started, so we are going to continue with this. Vegetative reproduction is a type of reproduction. It is put under asexual reproduction because of certain reasons like there does not or they does not show meiosis and there is no formation of gametes. We have discussed it in the last class. So, since it is a part of asexual reproduction, we have to talk about its detail in this chapter. Vegetative reproduction is of two types. In the last class, we have talked about they are broadly divided into natural vegetative reproduction and artificial vegetative reproduction. Natural vegetative reproduction again has certain types of classification means which are the parts that goes for natural vegetative reproduction. In case of natural vegetative reproduction, we know that any somatic part of the plant could get detached from the plant body and ultimately it can form an independent plant. Now, which part of the plant are we take, talking about or which part undergoes vegetative reproduction? It can be stems, it can be leaves, it can be roots. There are certain structures called as bulbils, turions, etc. So, we are going to start natural vegetative reproduction. Right? So, natural vegetative reproduction, what are the vegetative parts? occurs through it can occur through or reproductive unit could be a stem leaves roots bulbils turions etc right so we would be starting with stem when we talk about stem, stem has been classified, I think we have done it in the last class, under three categories. They are underground stem, sub aerial or creeping stems. and aerial stems. So, we would be knowing first about the underground stem. The different types of underground stems are number one tuber talking about tuber the best example is potato artichoke etc another information about it is it is formed at the terminal end of the stem right and the next information is it is swollen due to accumulation of food so underground stem Taking part in vegetative propagation or reproduction, the first is the tuber, the best example is potato, everyone has seen how does the potato look like. So this, if you are talking about a potato like this, we have seen certain structures like this and what are these called? These are nothing but eyes, right? And it is through the eyes that the buds develop and the new plants, they get formed. So this is all about tuber. The next type is rhizome. So, these are the things we have already learned about it. Talking about rhizome again, some common examples of rhizome 
जिंजर बनाना टर्मेरिक एडियन टर्म एक्सेट्रा right so these are the common examples rhizome boli kwa loge loge ginger is the most common example and these things are something that we always see in our day to day life we have a example that is called as adian term do you remember where you have heard this term or what type of a plant is it adian term is also called as walking fern so since now we know the name at least we have an idea adian term belongs to which type of plant we have read about it in plant classification right or we have talked about in plant kingdom so it is a walking fern so obviously it is an example of teredo fight so this is something extra that you have to know coming back to the topic again rhizomore example ki e bilak hol rhizomore common example some points about rhizome they they are branched so they are nothing but branch stems and they grow obliquely and or horizontally they grow obliquely or horizontally horizontally we understand horizontal is this what is oblique in growing in a slanting position that is what is called as oblique straight straight no common slant kori jodi hoy tak ami ki boli ko oblique position rhizome has nodes internodes buds and leaves how does the rhizome look like a very rough diagram and all these are nothing but advantageous roots so did this could be considered as a bud and this bud will detach from the parent body and ultimately will form a new plant so example of a rhizome is ginger and they will obviously develop roots and these roots are called as advantageous roots so these are the informations about the next underground stem that is rhizome coming to the third one we have a term called as offset so what is a offset offset is also an example or it is also a type of underground stem or the here since we are talking about underground stem the third example or the third type of underground stem would be bulb offset would also be an example of a stem but it is an example of a creeping stem and not of an underground stem so the third type of underground stem is bulb the base examples of bulb onion garlic etc right so bulb ya yeah, information ami ki sanu it is um uh, information about bulb ekdam basic information keta man amar mor rakhibo lagibo uh inner leaf bases are edible 
and fleshy outer leaf bases are dry and papery talking about the stem the stem is highly reduced and it is unbranched right so bulb is the third type of underground stem common examples are onion and garlic these again are the two most common examples that we see in our everyday or day to day life so talking about this these are the three points that you need to remember we have a term called as reduced stem what is a reduced stem a stem that is very compact or it does not grow much high that is called as a reduced stem for example if you are talking about a onion like this So this portion is the stem since it is a very compact structure so it is called as reduced stem these are advantageous roots and these are nothing but the leaf bases so in case of onion the portion that we eat as food is nothing but the leaf base so a question that is asked is what is the edible part of onion the edible part of onion is nothing but the leaf bases and to be more precise which leaf bases we are talking about we are talking about the inner leaf bases outer leaf base what we are referring to here is the peel that we throw off right junto pias to kati le bakuli to ami pelai diu that is what is called as the outer leaf base and that is something that is dry and it is papery when we are talking about bulb another term that we need to remember is called as tunica some bulbs are called as tunicated bulbs and some bulbs are called as naked bulbs now what is a tunica it is nothing but a covering right if the bulb has a covering on its surface that covering would be called as tunica and such type of a bud such type of a bulb would be called as a tunicated bulb certain bulbs do not have a tunica and in that case they are said to be naked so tunica is a covering if it is present it is called as tunicated bulb and if it is absent the bulb is called naked bulb example of a naked bulb could be chili an example of tunicated bulb is onion and garlic so if it has a covering it is called as tunic or it is called as tunicated and if it does not have a covering it is called as naked again tunica or tunicated bulb could be simple or compound example of a simple tunicated bulb is onion an example of a compound tunicated bulb is garlic so these are some extra points when you are talking about bulb this is something that you have to know in case of onion we understand or we know that when we peel off an onion is just one covering that we are peeling it off and so it is called as a simple tunica but in case of garlic each and every clove of garlic has its independent covering and since it has many covering together in that same bulb so it is an example of a compound tunicated bulb so bulb is another example or it's another type of underground stem next we go to the fourth one the fourth type of underground stem 
is corn. Examples of corn. Colocasia, gladiolus, etc. It grows vertically beneath the soil. Tamane mati to lot hoy. Horizontally no hoy, kind of vertically hoy. That ki thake has nodes, internodes, buds, and scale leaves. Remember, we have talked about this sentence when we were discussing about rhizome also. Rhizome also has nodes, internodes, buds and scale leaves. What is a node? What is an internode? Whenever we are talking about a stem, one of the most important characteristics of a stem is it has nodes and internodes, right? So, if you are talking about a stem like this, if this is a node, this is another node, this portion would be called as internode right so characteristics in node internode thakibo buds are scale leaves thakibo our buds would be responsible for the production of the new plant right ar riyate eta example diya ase colocasia colocasia in asmes ami jontu kosu buli ko kosu tu ami sobe dekhi su sake kosu bostu tu we are not talking about the aerial parts of colocasia but we are talking about the part that is beneath the ground tolot jontu eta round but swollen structure eta thake that is brown in color that is what is called as corm how does it look like it almost look like something like this Just a very rough diagram. A bilago kami ki bili kong node, right? A major zeka ki this portion would be called as internode. This is nothing but a scale leaf, and these are this could act as a bud so this is something how a corn look like right so it's almost like this you have a bud and this bud is responsible or act as a vegetative propagule or the new plant forms here once the bud gets detached from the parent body it falls to the soil and then ultimately a new plant is formed so these four were the examples of underground stem so we know stem could always act as a means of vegetative reproduction stems are of various types underground stems again is of four different types next we come to the next category of stem that is sub aerial or creeping stems the second type category of stem is creeping stem what is sub aerial aerial mane ki or sub aerial mane ki when we talk about aerial it is that part of the plant body that lies above the ground that is called as aerial and that portion that lies beneath the ground is called as underground but we are using a word sub aerial means what it is not completely above the ground or uh, the simplest way to understand is it is not completely erect 
right i think we understand the erect and the prostrate condition right subaerial jumbilac stems they go almost parallel with the ground that is what is called as subaerial again we have a term called as creeping creeping means what those who creep along the ground is called as creeping our simple our simple language or but simple normal people i mean to keep like almost like a climber like i mean keep like creeping but but botanically creepers and climbers they will have two different meanings let's not go to that point now we will be discussing some subaerial or creeping stems types of subaerial stems number one could be a term called as runner runner type of a stem is most common in grasses they are long or elongated so these stems are elongated they have long internode and they root at the nodes so three types or four types we are going to study in this category runner offset stolon etc within each heading there are few lines or there are few points that you need to specifically remember in case of runner this is the most common example that it has been asked next is you need to remember they have long internode and the next point is root at the nodes what we understand by this point if i draw the diagram then it will become much more clearer so if you are talking about a plant like this this is the soil So this is a rough diagram how does a runner look like so this is this one is it looks like runner or it is the runner this is nothing but the node right these are advantageous roots right so we see that this stem it develops from this basal part of this main plant and then it runs almost parallel to the soil so it creeps along the soil and it looks as if it is running from this plant this plant has a connection with this plant this plant has a connection with this plant so this type of a stem would be called as runner what you notice is whenever we are talking about a grass and if suppose you go for uh, um, if you go for uh, pulling up that grass what you will see is you cannot pull the entire grass together but one portion is attached to the other portion if there is a stem in between these two it is called as this type of a stem would call as runner and another point is they will always have advantageous roots at the nodes so since it looks almost as if this plant is running from this place to here and here to here we have been using the term called as runner so what is a runner it is an example of a subaerial creeping stem and this runner could always act as a means of vegetative propagation i think we understood so in this type of uh, when you are studying about this type of stems it is better that you first look at the diagram and then you study so looking at the diagram it will make the concept more clearer the second type of subaerial stem is offset examples of offset or offset could be seen in acornia pistia etc these are nothing but certain aquatic plants 
right? Important point about offset is this type of a stem has a cluster of leaves above and a tuft of hairs below. The third point is it is one internode long. As I said under each heading there are specific points that you need to remember and from MCQ or from entrance point of view the question is always asked on these specific points. For example, the question might be asked what is that stem called as which has only one long internode or what is this type of stem called as when it has a cluster of leaves above and a tuft of hair below. So looking at this or just reading these two lines, this line or maybe this line, you should be able to identify that we are talking about that stem that is called as offset and generally offset is seen in case of aquatic plants. Now how does the offset look like? We are drawing at uh, the most common um, example that is or the base example that we see is of Ecornia. Ecornia, the common name of Ecornia, he will call water hyacinth, right? So this is almost a rough diagram of a cornea. So these are nothing but leaves, right? Roots or advantageous roots that look like hairs, right? And this is what is called as offset. So this is or these are the information that you have to know about offset. So base example is Ecornia uh, and we have examples like Pistia also. They have a cluster of leaves. What we understand by the term cluster is they do not only have just one leaf but there are many leaves that develops from this point. What is this point that we are talking about? This is nothing but the node. From that node you have many leaves coming out at the same time and from that same node itself you have hair like structures that it comes out. So if this is the characteristic then this type of a stem would be called as an offset and the most important another line is it is one internode long means if this is a node this is a node this is the internode it is one internode long and this type of a stem would be called as a offset. So these are the informations about offset. Now there are certain extra points that you have to know about one example that is called as Ecornia. Ecornia or water hyacinth. Ecornia, it is also called as water, water, water hyacinth. What do you need to know? It is an example of invasive weed. 
native place kot asile south america ar tar pura loi ana hoisile it is a weed maneki weed we understand the unwanted plant is called as weed invasive means it has come from some other place and it has grown in some other place belegeta area t hoise hi ba belegor pura ahi pela belegeta jaga thuatu ami ki buli kom invasive now it is declared as a weed so if it is a weed then why was it brought the south america pura e ikornia plant dal ke anisil jodi weed e hoy the answer is it was brought to india or it was brought here because of because of its pretty flowers and its beautiful leaves full to dekhat bor dhuniya asile leaf kitao dekhat dhuniya asile ar hei karone because of its beauty it was brought to our place but later it was seen that a particular term is related with this one and this is called as terror of bengal right so क्वेश्चन आए टेरर अफ बेंगल कले उच प्लांट टू वी आंडार सेट वी आर टकिंग अबाउट इकर्णिया दिस टाइप अफ अ प्लांट एज अ हाई रिप्रोडक्टिव रेट सो द रिप्रोडक्शन केपेसिटी इज भेरी इंटेन्स एंड सो इन अ भेरि शर्ट टाइम इट इट रिप्रड्यूस एंड अलमोस्ट fills that area where it is growing and whenever we are talking about ikornia it is a water plant so i think you all can imagine you are talking about a water area where suppose you have incorporated one ikornia within a very short time many ikornia would grow and if suppose many or very huge amount of ikornia grows then obviously it will have a negative impact on the aquatic bodies that lives in that water and what is the negative impact we are talking about is this plant since it has a high reproductive rate it will take out what the maximum or it will absorb maximum amount of oxygen from the water and as a result the aquatic uh, fishes or aquatic organisms would get less oxygen so ikornia what does it do it drains up oxygen from the water body and ultimately this leads to death of fishes right so we are discussing about vegetative reproduction this points doesn't have any relation with that point but since we are talking about the term offset and ikornia is an example of a offset these are the extra points that you have to remember question ki hor report ahi said terror of bengal cut koi ikornia koi what is it invasive with ta ki hor karane ana hoisile because of its pretty flowers and leaves so i can likhilwa the third type of sub aerial stem is stolon the next type is stolon and the examples of stolon is strawberry and leaves of vallisneria what is vallisneria vallisneria is nothing but a aquatic plant characteristics of this stem is it grows obliquely upwards and then bends down to touch the ground right diagram dile basically clear hobo 
so it grows obliquely upwards and then it bends down to touch the ground so how does a stolon look like if you are talking about a plant like this suppose and this is we are talking about the basal stem of the stolon what does the stolon do or oh, this type of a stem has a characteristic here. it grows obliquely upward and then it bends downwards aru juntu portion of hi mati sue tat ki hobo it start rooting ar tar pasot ako notun plant adal hoy jabo so this is the characteristic of a stolon now don't get confused between runner and stolon right it looks no doubt it looks almost the same but the difference is runner at ki asile je plant dal jeti ite ke grow kore the runner moves almost parallel to the soil no parallel li jai etu ki hor kotha koy aso runner right ki the offset or sorry in case of stolon ki hoy ei portion tok ami ki buli kom stolon buli kom so long at ki hobo je first it will go upwards and then it will come downwards and at that point they will start rooting and ultimately they grow into a new plant so this was the information about the third type of aerial stem sorry the third type of sub aerial stem that is stolon next we come to the last one that is called as sucker examples of sucker mint banana pineapple etc right so what we know about sucker is it develops from or this type of a stem develops from 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 the axillary bud in the part of underground stem so what is a sucker a sucker is an example of a sub aerial or creeping stem important uh, information about a sucker is it develops from the axillary bud axillary bud he aru he axillary bud to ko thakibo he bud to thakibo underground stem what we are discussing we are not discussing underground stem we are discussing sub aerial stem or creeping stems but sucker hobo lagile yat kenuka hobo lagibo diagram to beshi easy hobo buji pabole suppose we are talking about a plant right right are you at it hora just a very rough right rough so this is a plant a portion kine ami ki kom start aru this one second i'll just draw it better this is the plant a portion kini this portion is the stem a stem the lor ki hoy ase half above the ground and the other half is below the ground 
So you have a part of a stem that lies below the ground and this is nothing but the soil or the ground that we are talking about right now if it is a sucker it will develop from a axillary bud that develops from that part of the stem that is below the ground a upora if you see the diagram properly these are nothing but sucker and from where does the sucker develops it develops from this portion that is below the ground coming to the term axillary we have two terms one is called as terminal and the other is called as axillary what is terminal if something is formed at the tip of that part it is called as terminal and axillary means we have at this um, we it is formed from this portion right or maybe it is from this angle axillary position or axillary bud would be more clear if you are talking about this diagram suppose we are talking about a stem like this and this is the leaf right so this portion if they have a bud here this bud would be called as axillary bud now this diagram does not have a reference with this diagram i have drawn this diagram just to understand or just to make you all understand what you understand by the word axillary axillary or we are talking about in other language or in very simple language what you can say maybe we are talking about that angle right between this one and this one is called as the axillary similarly if if you are talking about this part of a stem which is below the ground a portion to prakiyo is at a branch will go say kihor branch stem or branch and that particular branch of the stem will have a particular name and that name is called as a sucker so example of a sucker is mint banana pineapple etc and for those students who have mint in their house jeti podina plant ase ar podina jeti tumaluke uthai paisa i am not talking about plucking the leaves i am talking about uprooting that podina plant jeti uthai paisa what you have noticed is you cannot be uprooting the plant at a go what happens is it just snaps off jetia uthabole jao tetia okol eta part singi pele gusi ahe gutei podina plant dal uthi nahe kiho karane nahe kiho karane okol eta part khali singi pele ahi jay karon we know because one part of the stem is still below the ground it is not the roots that is just below the ground a part of the stem also lies below the ground and so it snaps off ar he karane uthabole okoman digari hoy okay let's not discuss about all those stuffs coming back to the point what you need to remember is sucker sucker or base example a to tar bitor on maximum question has been asked about this point we are discussing the different types of stems that take part or take or take part in vegetative propagation stems classified under three categories underground subaerial and aerial underground stem we have talked about the four different types sub aerial we have talked about the four types now we'll come to the word aerial stem what is a aerial stem any stem that is above the ground is called as aerial stem now which stem would take part in vegetative propagation that part of the aerial stem or that stem should have right so what is the most important point is if a aerial stem or any part of the aerial stem has to take part in vegetative propagation that part should always have nodes and nodes it might be like this that they have many nodes at one go or at least one node eta node jodi na thake tete hale tar vegetative propagation ketiao no hoy node eta lagiboi and the best example we can talk about is sugar cane oponsia etc so sugar cane oponsia these are examples of some aerial stem so for a part of aerial stem to take part in vegetative reproduction important was to keep je eta node rakhibo so this is all about stem next is we know not only stems take part in vegetative reproduction but leaves can also be leaves can also be a mean of vegetative reproduction when we talk about leaves taking part in vegetative reproduction amar example ki mona ta hai bryophyllum calonsi etc 
right? So, bryophyllum or Ahomiat ki ko Ahomiat ra naam asa no. Taka me ki bolii ko pate goza. So, pate goza ki ho kani koi so because that new plant develops from the leaf itself and so it is called as such. So, sometimes leaves can also act as a means of vegetative propagation. Tar mane leaf or purao ata nutun plant ho bo pare. So, bryophyllum is the best example. Bryophyllum or ami ki jano that it develops. Advantageous buds from the notice on the margin of the leaf. So advantageous bud tha ki bo, in a way chano vegetative propagation kori bo lagi le bud lagi bo, ar bud bila ko tha ki bo, margin of a leaf, what we understand by a leaf margin, suppose we are talking about a bryophyllum, maybe a bryophyllum looks like this, jadi if suppose it looks like this almost, right, e je bhaaz bila ko tekhi suno, e bila ko kami ki buli ko, no chis. develop koribo no to plant develop koribo pare so a new plant develops when it is still attached with the mother plant so these are the advantageous buds that we are talking about so this is the new plant and new plant dal it grows when it is still attached and once it gets detached from the parent body it will grow into a new plant independently so these are nothing but the notches, right? And this is what is called as the margin of the leaf. So leaves sort ki zanuze mi bryophyllum example to sani bolibo. Aru duta term ase, eta hole bulbil, aru eta ase thurian. Now bulbil and thurian can also act as a means of vegetative reproduction. Bulbil ki hoi fleshy buds, example of a bulbil ki hoi lily. Right? Aru thurian ki hoi fleshy buds in aquatic plants and aquatic plants kulmila for example ko so we are talking about utricularia right the best example showing a bulbil showing a uterion is utricularia how does it look like we'll just give a rough diagram Suppose this is the round diagram of the utricular area. A to kami ki buli ko? Thurion buli ko. Thurion to ki ho? Nothing but a bud. So when this thurion gets detached from the parent body, it can form a new plant. So vegetative reproduction of bulbil or thurion will take place. Bulbil, we had already discussed a term called as bulb. Now bulb or bulbil, almost same type of dekhat hoi, almost spherical in structure. But one major difference between bulb and bulbil is, this is something that is aerial or bulb ki hoi, it is always an example of underground stem. A to hold aerial or a to hold underground. So, a duta part yo, to my vegetative reproduction kori bo pare. And now we come to the last part, that is roots as a means of vegetative reproduction. We know vegetative reproduction or carne, which parts can take place, stems, leaves, roots, each and everything can be a part of or can act as a vegetative propagule. Talking about roots, roots 
कि टाइप अफ थे क्लासिफाई जेडी करूँ दे आर टेप रूट एंड दे आर एडभान्टेज रूट ना बोथ दिज टू रूट बोथ कैन टेक पार्ट इन वेजिटेटिव रिप्रोडक्शन इफ दे हाव कि लगभग एट इम्पर्टेन्ट केक्टरिस्टिक रेडिकल बाल सो व्हाट इज अ रेडिकल बाट अ बाट दैट डेवलप्स एट द रूट इज कॉल्ड एज अ रेडिकल बाट जेडी रेडिकल बाट थके हे बाट टू विल गेट स्नैप्ड ऑफ एंड देन दे विल फॉर्म अ इंडिपेंडेंट प्लान सो रूट कैन आल्सो बी अ मींस ऑफ वेजिटेटिव रिप्रोडक्शन वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट टेप रूट और एग्जांपल जाने बोली हुआ एंड वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट एडवांटेजियस रूट्स प्लांट्स हैविंग एडवांटेजियस रूट्स फॉर्मिंग न्यू प्लांट टेप रूट और वन एग्जांपल डालबर्जिया सिसु or it is also called as sisen very important and advantageous roots or example or the plants having advantageous roots that take part in vegetative reproduction the most important example ipomia batata what is ipomia batata nothing but sweet potato second examples could be yam asparagus tapioca dalia etc so these are the examples of roots taking part in vegetative propagation here we thought ami ki gom palu je any plant some plants with tap root system also can take part in vegetative propagation some plants with advantageous roots also can take part in vegetative reproduction from examination point of view or from entrance point of view question has been asked about the examples very important and this one also right out of this ipomia is important tapioca report question i say as almost all gude gita ami porhibo leibo Up till here, we have completed the natural type of vegetative reproduction. I think you all have understood this part. In the next class, what we will be discussing is artificial means of vegetative reproduction. Thank you.